Welcome to today's TA Tech Tip where we're talking about the choosing the right geometry for performing experiments on your DHR rheometer. There are many choices of geometries, some of them stretch from dealing with very low viscosity fluids all the way through to stiff samples. If we consider the right choice, the right material and the right options for you to get the best of your measurements. The important thing is that the geometry is the thing that comes in contact with your sample, so it defines its dimensions and it defines the ranges to operate within the instrument. So as a result, we choose the one that gives us the best results. The concentric cylinders are usually chosen for low viscosity fluids because the sample can be contained with inside a cup and it gives us the largest surface area to deal with for being the most sensitive because the simple thing is that the instrument will apply a force and it's applied over the largest surface area. Concentric cylinders are historically the best choice for people who've come from viscometer ranges, but they're not necessarily the best choice for doing tests. So that's when we move to cones and parallel plates. Most people in cones use them because of they have a constant shear profile under the geometry, so they are the academic choice. There are a range of diameters and choices of materials, as there are for the parallel plates. So we have to think about what cases and what time to use which system. For cones, the drawback is that it's not very good for non-colloidal systems. Any particles can physically jam between the small gap between the plate, the cone itself, and the lower plate. With that in mind, that's the why the reason is to choose the parallel plate. This negates the problem and we can use that over a range of samples like polymer melts and gels. Choosing the material tends to be a choice of stainless steel, titanium or aluminium. Stainless steel can take anything that's thrown at it in terms of it's chemically inert, good for high range of temperatures and basically an all round good workhorse. Whereas hard anodized aluminium and titanium geometries have slightly lower limitations but they also have a light density system, so they are greater for oscillation experiments, the best choice. Choosing the diameter chooses the surface area, and that chooses the sensitivity. So we choose 60 millimeter geometries, typically for low viscosity fluids. We use a 40 millimeter for samples that match typical household paints, and we use a 25 or 20 millimeter parallel plates, or even down to an 8 millimeter plate, if we're dealing with samples that are very high in viscosity, like putties or pastes. For those that finish off, if you get a sample that's so stiff, then we end up using the torsional clamp system, which enables us to measure solid samples and bars over a range of temperatures and transitions. So you can see that there's a range of products available. A choice of geometry is important to give you a working range of the instrument and to give you the best results in any of your testing.